Welcome to Laravel 5.8 Preview Part 2. In this episode, we're going to explore even more new features coming to Laravel 5.8. Stay tuned. So of course, as development continues of Laravel 5.8, we have even more features to talk about. And today, we're going to be talking about Carbon 2 and a couple of changes to the collection classes. But before we keep going, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the little bell button so you get notified with any new videos that we publish. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about Carbon. Of course, Carbon is the PHP library that we use for daytime. PHP's built-in daytime is a little confusing, and Carbon makes our life extremely easy. So for Laravel 5.8, we're upgrading to Carbon 2.0. Now, Carbon 2.0 brings new features with it, but the most important new concept is the immutable date class. And this is something that I personally ran into when I first started using Carbon, and it threw me for a loop. And that is the following. Let me show you an example. So here we are in our Laravel 5.8. I'm just going to pop into our web.php and we'll continue from the previous lesson. So route, let's add a new get route and we'll call it carbon function. And so here it is. Let's say we have a date and we just call carbon now. And let's go ahead and dump date at this point. Okay. And then later down the road, let's say we add days and let's add three days to that. And then let's dump that date variable again. Let's check out the results in the browser. Switch over to carbon. Whoops, made a little typo here. And there we are. So we see our first date is 27, and then our second date is 210, even though this is the same variable. So what is happening is that we are actually changing our object. Now, this may be the desirable thing you want, but most of the time, it's actually not. Most of the time, dates are protected. If you're going to create a new date, you should have to create a new date. You should not be able to modify a date. Because, for example, let's say that one of your columns is a date of birth. That is not something that's going to change. However, you may create a copy of it and do some modifications for it. So, for example, we can find out when we are one week away from your birthday, but that does not change your birthday. Your birthday is always the same. It doesn't change. So in dates, typically you don't want them to change like this. And that's where the carbon immutable comes in. Now, before we can talk about that, we got to talk about the new facade. So there's a whole new facade based around here. And the new facade in Laravel 5.8 is going to be date. And we'll find it here, illuminate support facades date. So now all of the functions that you used carbon for before, now you're going to use date, the date facade. And so this is an opt in feature. If you don't want to use this, you can continue to use carbon your regular way. However, starting in 5.8, if you want to switch over to Carbon Immutable in your app service provider, in the register method, you can add date factory. And now we're going to say use Carbon Immutable class. And just by adding that, let's head back to the browser and I'm going to refresh this and see what happens. Notice this first date is 27 and then the second one is 210. So now we refresh and we're at 27 and 27. And that is because carbon is not actually changing the date. And that's kind of the behavior that you expect from it. So you see here we have a carbon immutable object as opposed to just a carbon object. And now the dates are exactly the same. Now to look back at the code, you see here that we tried to add three days, but that didn't work. What we actually would have to do is create a copy and on that copy, we can add three days. And so we have a new date equal to that. And then we can say, go ahead and dump new date. And now we're back to exactly the same thing again, two seven and two 10. So that is kind of the expected behavior of dates in life in general. And now the code reflects that. So moving on, let's talk about cash. Cache in Laravel is the easiest thing in the world and it facilitates caching parts of your website makes it extremely useful. So a small change in Laravel 5.8 is that up until this point, you could only get down to a minute cache, right? So if you wanted to cache something for say 30 seconds, you couldn't do that because the minimum was one minute. So now let me show you an example. We'll say route 
get. We'll just call it cash. Again, let's return our function. And now let's cache something. So we'll say cache, and we're going to use the facade, cache. And then we'll say remember. And the key we're going to give it is just test demo. And then as a second argument, of course, you're going to pass in how long this is going to be. We'll just say three for three seconds. Remember, now this number is in seconds. This is the change right here. So now we can say function, and we're just going to return time. So I just want to prove to you that it is being cached every three seconds. So in the browser, let's move on to cache, our next example. And there we are. So these are seconds in Unix time. So notice here we have 73, 80, 83. And if you keep refreshing, 86, there it is, 89. So you see it is resetting every three seconds. Notice even though I'm refreshing, if you watch up here, I'm continually refreshing but we are not getting new values. We're getting values every three seconds. And that is because now cache is down to the seconds. So look around your projects, make sure that you take any values that you currently have, and you're gonna have to times 60 that same value. So if you had three before for three minutes, now of course you'd have to have 180 seconds. So that's a quick change. Look through your code, any place that you're using cache, go ahead and convert it from minutes to seconds. Laravel 5.7, the minimum password requirement was six characters. That is now moving to eight characters, which is obviously cryptographically more secure. So to show you that, let's pop up into our terminal and we'll say PHP artisan make auth. And so now let's go ahead and try to make a user. Let's register. And so we'll say John Doe john at example.com and then we'll say one two three four five six i know you can't see it but that's what i'm typing one two three four five six register and we get the password must be at least eight characters so this is a nice little addition just to stay a little bit more secure by default so this is a nice welcome change nothing crazy here no breaking changes with that all right, so up next, let's talk about Amazon Dynamo DB. So if you are doing any sort of caching as a service, you might be using Redis, you might be using your database. However, a new service is Amazon's Dynamo DB. Now, of course, it promises like every AWS product to be absolutely scalable. It is a non-relational database, just like Redis is, and they promise performance in the single milliseconds. So extremely fast. In Laravel 5.8, you can now use this database. So if you visit your cache.php file, your config file, you see here now, of course, you can use array, database, file, memcache, and Redis, but now you do have this new AWS service available to you. So if you're already in the AWS cloud and you want to expand on your services with your Laravel project, this is an easy change for you. All right, the last two things we're going to be talking about is two Laravel collection changes that are coming. So the first one we've already covered in our channel. However, just for representation in this video, we're going to show it one more time in a very quick overview. So let's say route get first where. So first where is a method that is going to allow you to return the first instance where something happens out of a collection. So if we had a collection and let's just say return collect if you guys are not up to par with all the collections, we do have a whole series, over 60 videos at this point in every single method in the collection. So definitely check those out. This is just going to be a quick preview of collections. So let's say product. Let's say this first one is null. And then the second one, we'll just say 20. So we are looking for this product right here. And all we want to say is give me the first where product is true. Okay. Let's go back to our browser, change over to first where, and there we are. So we're getting product equals 20. But in Laravel 5.7, it required you to have a second parameter. So you could not do something clean like this. You would actually have to have a second parameter in which most of the time you'd probably just pass true, but now you don't have to do that. So that's a nice welcome addition that follows the flow of all the other collections in Laravel. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the reject method. So the reject method, let's show that one here in a new line. Let's say reject function. So the reject method is going to allow you to completely erase your collection. And this is useful sometimes if a random event was to happen, say in your app, we're going to simulate that right now. We'll say that a random 
event happened, right? So we'll set that equal to true. And then let's have our collection, collect data. And we'll just grab this collection right here since we already have a collection built up. So we'll just say that's our data object. And then let's just say if this random event happened, I want to go ahead and reject this whole collection, meaning I want to empty it out. And you can call reject now with no parameters. That is the change. Reject has always been around, but this is the new change. Now you can just call it without any parameters at all, where before you would have had to pass true, which didn't make a ton of sense because reject will actually allow you to reject specific keys. But if you just wanted to reject the whole thing, you could just pass in no arguments at all. All right, so let's check that out in the browser, reject. And of course we get an empty collection. Now, if that random event we were talking about did not happen in that case, then of course we get our collection back. So with that, that is the Laravel 5.8 preview two. That's our second video on this. Again, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date. We are still actively working on our collections course and we have a ton of video and content coming every single week. So stay tuned, subscribe. And if you have any questions, hit us up on Twitter at coders tape or down below in the comments for coders tape. This is Victor. Thanks for watching.